you've been stuck in a rut, but you're dreaming of the big ways to make improvements in your life, but regardless of all the times that you've been trying to change, it is just not work. Maybe your approach is what is wrong. Maybe you've been forcing yourself too much. And if you want to see changes in your life, you don't have to force yourself to change right away. Better to make small incremental changes over a longer period of time. The little habits that you do every day is what will make a bigger impact in your life overall. So to live the best version of yourself, all you need to do is to make simple, small changes over a longer period of time. Let me share with you my simple self-improvement tip that will definitely change your life right now. Hi, I'm Munif Ali. I'm here to help you achieve your goals and your dreams by showing you simple self-improvement, things that you can do right now. So let's get it started. This may sound ridiculous, but one simple thing you can do is to drink plenty of water. Your body actually needs water to maintain its mobility and remain healthy. It can be tough to follow the recommended eight glasses of water a day, but there are a lot of benefits from drinking water. You can prevent headaches, you can get less fatigue. And a study shows that 75% of Americans are walking around dehydrated. Now, I do see people carrying big giant gallons of water and I'm not saying go to that extreme either but try to drink water every now and then because it will help you maintain your energy it's great for your body it will help you avoid headaches and maintain your energy over the long run sadly a lot of us don't notice that a simple glass of water can improve your performance and keep you hydrated an easy way to remind yourself to drink more water is to have water near you and always keep it full it's called the availability bias and when you see a glass you will have a tendency to drink from it just remember to pour once you've emptied that glass of water or just bring a water bottle with you wherever you go let's talk about those smartphones aka dumb phones most of the time it's one of the biggest distractions in our everyday life so you know that phone Phone, carrying it along everywhere takes away from productivity. You're at work, you're constantly looking at your phones. Your notifications are coming up. You're trying to have dinner with people that you want to sit there with in peace. That phone is with us all the time. People are distracted while they're driving. They're distracted while they're eating. Pay attention to a little bit by putting away that dopamine fix of having a phone around you at all times. This will not only help in your energy level and creativity, but your focus as well. A simple thing to do is start to put your phone in the next room. And I guarantee you, there's not gonna be any life-threatening emergencies that you're gonna miss out on or not be informed of right away. Get used to not having that phone around you. Me coming from an era where we didn't have cell phones so readily attached to our everyday life, I missed that period where you actually had to know someone's home phone to be able to contact them. And there was a lot more free time and a lot of people, kids actually played in the street with bikes and skateboards. It was shocking. But that's what happened as we've gotten more and more connected to social media. So leave that phone away from you when you want to increase your productivity. Get used to it not being around you for five minutes at a time. Remember, I advocate for incremental change. So start sparing yourself from the phone for five minutes, 10 minutes, build up to a few hours of focused activity. And where you really want to be is three to four hours of focused activity in your chosen craft, whether you're a CPA or a contractor or a realtor or anybody. If you can allocate three to four hours of focused activity in your craft, you're gonna get successful very successful over a short period of time if you just do it over and over again so no more phone around you for three to four hours while you maintain focus on one given task get used to the habit of waking up without an alarm the first thing you hear when you're coming out of sleep is some alarm out there and it already jolts you so one of the first things that you need to do is to put that alarm far away, not right next to your nightstand, but actually across the room if you really want to get up on time. The studies show people with alarms keep hitting that snooze button. And what you end up getting is going back to sleep, back and forth, back and forth. And guess what? You're already tired by the time you get up. So one of the tricks that I like to use is if, if I have to wake up on a specific time or at a specific time, put that alarm clear across the room and I bet you'll get up to get it to stop. When you're on your phone, make sure all your notifications are off unless it pertains to a particular thing that you are working on. So I like to control all my notifications, turn everything off and only turn on things that are going to be useful. You'll find that you'll get up to 30 minutes to an hour back of your time by just limiting your phone usage and your notifications. Another simple habit is just eating healthier whole food. Now, I'm not going to be on one side of the island and say, you know, eat like a carnivore, eat like a vegan, be a raw vegan, all of this, you know, keto. It doesn't matter as long as you're eating whole foods and not something out of a box. You'll see your energy level increase 
We already talked about hydration. Now, if you're looking at just food alone, most of the westernized countries in the world are completely hooked on processed food. When you start to eat a whole food diet, you're gonna see your energy levels increase. So it doesn't matter what camp you are from, start to eat more whole foods and you'll see your energy level come up and your productivity. Be accountable for what you put into your body. And you can always make adjustments based on how you feel, not because some hotshot wrote a book or you're watching somebody else's channel. How do you feel eating the way you're eating? If you're eating a lot of junk food, cut that out. In the beginning, you're gonna be a little tired. If you're gonna cut out carbs, you're gonna be a little tired. You're gonna be a little grumpy. All these things happen. But give it a little bit of time and see what diet ultimately and optimally works for you because no human being is exactly like someone else. Next, let's go on to reading. A great habit to have. It reduces stress. It slows down the aging process in your brain. It gets you logical and critical thinking. It helps with your creativity depending on what you're reading. And it helps with comprehension and critical thinking skills. Reading is an amazing way to increase your brain power and also help you prevent diseases of the brain like Alzheimer's. It's important for you to do a little bit of reading every single day. Think of it as a workout for your brain so that you can remain alert and stay focused. You don't have to do a whole lot of reading, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. And if you could do more, great. The most successful people in the world always are readers. It's a simple way to relax as well. So make sure you pick up a book and read a few pages every single day. And if you have trouble sleeping, you can try that as well. Limit the amount of light that you're exposed to and then try to read that book. Limit the amount of exposure you have if you have trouble sleeping, you can also read a book, relax a bit, put the book away, go to sleep. Let's go on to a couple more things that will help you out. You will be more of a reader if you just bring a book with you everywhere you go. If you're going to a doctor's office, a dentist's office, if you're going to be on a bus or train, no matter what you do, with the exception of maybe driving while you're reading, bring a book with you. And it's just like I talked about water. If it's with you, if it's readily available, you're going to end up doing it. And it's part of building your healthy habits. Also, getting around other people who are like-minded will also be a great habit for you to expose yourself. People that have the same passions and the same hobbies. Science tells us that three out of four people who join meetups for hobbies and interests improve their emotional and social connection, which in turn improves your quality of life. And if your quality of life improves, so does your quality of work. This is also more helpful in removing the feelings of isolation and social distancing that we're all a part of now post-pandemic. And who knows, you might meet the next person you're going to go into a joint venture with or start a business with or start a relationship with. I'm always a firm believer in increasing your network. You get a lot of information and you pick up a lot of wisdom from a lot of people, which is always welcome when you're looking for self-improvement. On a different note, I got some great news for you. Every Monday, I'm hosting the Munif Ali podcast, where I'll be sharing my knowledge in finance and real estate and personal development to help you reach your version of what success is. I'm going to give you my unfiltered personal opinion on the latest trends in stocks and crypto, real estate, and much more. I hope you can join us there. See you there soon. The last tip I give you is to take a little bit of time for yourself. This can be in the form of meditation, AKA sitting in silence, journaling, writing stuff down, or simply being still and quiet. You can do this for as short of a time as two minutes. Two minutes has a drastic effect on lowering your blood pressure, which will actually help you de-stress yourself. And journaling also alleviates stress by detailing your thoughts and feelings. It helps you evaluate your problems and find solutions easier because you're putting it on paper. If journaling or meditation is not your thing, you can simply stand up from your desk and move around and go for a short walk. Also allow your brain to wander from whatever is stressing you and allow you to unwind a bit so that once you come back to work, you're feeling refreshed and ready to take on your task again. I also encourage you to take notes of the changes that you've made to track your progress. Oftentimes when you see numbers and it helps you maintain self-improvements that you have made. Remember to write your to-do list before you go to bed and put it right next to your alarm, which is on the other side of the room now, right? So once it rings, the first thing you do is get up to turn off that alarm and you see your list right there. Because it's visible, you're more than likely to pay attention to it. It will help you get your morning started right and get your brain to focus on the task ahead. And these are my simple tips on self-improvement. Just try one of them for a little bit and see how it changes your life. And another drastic change I'm going to ask you for is to hit that like and subscribe button. You can keep yourself updated with my latest video. Thank you you again for watching and if you want to learn more about self-improvement check out this video right here top five highly recommended books that will change your life